All right, let's talk about death. As a funeral director and host and creator of the popular web series, Ask a Mortician, Caitlin Doty takes the topic of death seriously, but also in her own lighthearted way. Her latest book called Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs has the answers to 35 of the most curious questions about death that she's heard of from kids. Caitlin is here now. Hi, Caitlin. Thank you. And you have the most excellent themed plate. Oh, that's not your plate. For my arrival. No, I thought no, you no. brought that with you. I didn't. Ah. I carry a plate on tour with me <laughs> to of put course. out at strategic times. All right, so let's start with the title of the book. Uh, will my cat eat my eyeballs? Spoiler, uh, at, if enough time has passed, yes, your beloved fluffkins will eventually uh -huh. go for your dead body because they're <laughs> starving and they share a large portion of their DNA with lions. Of course. That's a good point. They are carnivores. They are carnivores, and we love them, and they love us, and we love to cuddle, but <laughs> if you don't feed them, you're not, yeah, you know, it's true. You're not yeah. providing the contract. Yes. You're not keeping yes. up your end of the bargain, and they may go for your lips or your Whatever eyelids. Eyeballs get. wouldn't be the first choice, okay. but right. they might get there. And then, uh, where, what's the story behind why you chose this one? Well, I chose that title because this was actually the question from a young boy in Australia mm. at an event of mine that sparked the idea. Because he asked that question, I was like, that's just brilliant, <laughs> right? Because it gets to this existential fear that a lot of us adults have, sure. but in such a blunt, right. perfect, kids say the darndest thing type yeah. way. And so the questions in the book are sort of to that end. Questions that adults definitely have about our physical dead body and decay and the fact that we're going to die. That none of us want to say out loud. None of us want to <laughs> say out loud. And with the with the bluntness and the, the closeness to reality that children have. Did that inspire you to write a book about these kids' questions? Exactly. That question? Yeah, that question was the that first was the one that one. I was okay. like, wait a second, I think that kids, because by the time we're <laughs> eight or nine, we know that we're going to die, right. right? And that everyone yeah. we love is yeah. going to die. And Starts that's a harsh aware. realization. We, get a lot of, we give a lot of credit to the idea of a child's sexual awakening in adolescence, but we don't give a lot of credit to their death awakening mm. and all of the fears, the real genuine fears that come with that. So I hope to also give a vocabulary for adults who want to talk to children or a vocabulary for themselves that they never got when they right. were a child. What is the most common question? Ooh, so I know this is hard to believe, but something like, can I keep my dad's skull <laughs> on the mantelpiece? <laughs> or can I have a Viking funeral for grandma? Oh, I love the Viking funeral. Yeah, idea. and these are, like, you wouldn't I think that. that these would be the main questions, but I think people have, I think that's a really good way to get into it. Yeah. You know, it's an easy way to think about, okay, you know, is there a more whimsical way that I can get into this very hard, painful subject? Right. So can I keep my dad's skull on the mantle? It's going to be hard in the oh. United States. We have something called abuse of corpse laws, ah. which basically say Darn you can... Darn knows abuse of corpse I laws. Now, listen, I say that every day. You can <laughs> bury, you can cremate, you can donate your body to science, but the whole defleshing dad's yeah. skull and turning it mm. into a Thanksgiving centerpiece, not as easy so to do. So where do I need to move to do that? Hmm, that's a great <laughs> question. Maybe our own colony in international yeah, okay. waters where like everyone is just... A good idea. So obviously you have fun with this this topic, but you also take it very seriously. I mean, you are a legit mortician. You own a funeral. You home? own a funeral home. So this is your your life. Uh, how in, in the midst of all the, the grief that you deal with, families who've lost a loved one, how, I, how are you so matter of fact and and fun with it at the same time? My job, I think, as a professional, is not to completely emphasize and take on all the grief of a family mm. because they're taking care of that themselves. Right. They're feeling the grief. My job is to be competent and knowledgeable. And I think that if I can get that across to them, saying, I'm here, I'm competent, mm. I'm going to be the one to help you, that's me doing my job. At what point do you start passing out signed copies of your book? <laughs> you know, <laughs> some people who come to my funeral home know exactly what they're getting into, and they're like, Caitlin, I'm so sorry we have to meet under my dad's death right, circumstances, sure. but can you sign my book? And, you know, if you have no idea who I am, you will get none of that. You will have a very normal funeral right. experience, and I will not drop the, you know, do okay. you want to give grandma a Viking funeral? You're not foisting the book on No, okay. not at all. That's, that's good. So you created an, and you host a web series as well called Ask a Mortician. Yes. Very popular. People love this. Well, because people have all these questions yeah. that they're too afraid to ask. And, you know, they could, some of the things that I talk about, they could Google or they sure. could find out. Right. But I think me talking about it in a way that is insistent that this is normal, that it's completely right. fine to have these questions, that we should be having these questions, and that we don't have to be so serious when we talk about it. 
it's not disrespectful to be interested in death. Right. In fact, it's a little more morbid when you're deeply in denial about your own death. Here's one of your uh, web series, as, as we enjoy <laughs> what it looks like. I want to ask you some of the favorite questions that I have from this book. Uh, we only have about a minute, so quick answers would be great if you can. Uh, and this is very important to me. If someone is eating something when they die, this is in the book, does their body continue to digest that food? It'll digest a little bit, but okay. mostly those processes stop, which means if you die right after you've eaten a pizza and they have the receipt saying when the Grubhub guy delivered the pizza, right. they might be able to determine your time of death <laughs> from the pizza evidence in sure. your stomach. Okay. Yeah, I guess there are a lot of clues there. Okay, another, in fact, it's the very next question in the book. Can everyone fit in a casket? What if they're really tall? There's a really large market now for what we call oversized ah, caskets because okay. we know Americans are getting taller sure. and wider. Yep. And so if you are, let's say, over 6'9 or over 400 pounds, talk to your funeral director about perhaps a okay. more accommodating casket. So you, you might have to get a bigger casket. Yep. Okay. Good to know. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. All right, what's, uh, as we go here, what's the biggest misconception? I like think that. that dead bodies are dangerous. Dead bodies are not dangerous huh. unless mom died of Ebola, which right. she didn't. It's completely safe to hold her hand, to stroke oh, okay. her face, to yeah. help with her hair, just to be present with her. Being dead doesn't make you automatically dangerous, mm. and pe most people don't know that. Okay. Well, good luck with the book, Caitlin. Thank you so much. It's a fascinating read. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm def I definitely will. And your, your town hall event is sold out tonight, but there, there are standby tickets. Uh, there's a line at the door if you want to try that. We also have uh, more info on New Day's website.